You know what I just realized? As much as I love Hideo Kojima, I don't think he should make video games anymore. What's going on folks, Big Iron right here, welcome to the Riot Stream where I talk about things I notice, love, hate, mostly hate, and Silent Hill stuff, all together in one nice neat package, generally. Yeah, anyway, uh, today I'm going to discuss with you something I've noticed, and before I even get into this, I need to mention the fact that there's one important fact that I put on top of whatever I say here, and that's, I believe Hideo Kojima is an absolute genius and the Metal Gear Solid franchise is top-notch top tier even the upper echelon of gaming for for sure whether it's uh, narratively or uh, just game overall love it absolutely love it that being said there's been a few things I've noticed over the course of the years and that have come to uh, that have come to light that have shown me that he simply is not meant for games uh and i'll get into that in a moment but but this this will this video will absolutely entail the multiple reasons why i believe he should not make games and should instead go to hollywood where minds like him actually thrive uh but as for games he's kind of it's kind of just tanking it and I will get the fanboys out there that love his work and everything and I and I and I appreciate some good fanboy uh, actions going on because I I do the same with a lot of the things that I love to be sure however in this case I will say right on the outset you're probably wrong all right so for the uninitiated uh, Hideo was born on August 24th 1963 in Setagaya Tokyo uh, he was the youngest of three children and uh, early on, it was all about movies for him, as uh, much of his contributions come from his family, where he spent uh, a lot of time inside, uh, generally building figurines and designing narratives for them and things like that, while his father was a pharmacist who often traveled for business. Uh, he was actually uh, named after one of the doctors he encountered. Um, he moved to Osaka at age four, uh, uh, continued his trend of staying indoors, uh, kind of keeping to himself, but uh, his family embraced the idea of watching cinema, uh, something that stuck with him uh, to this day. Uh, European cinema, westerns, and horror became regular features, and it shaped Kojima's cinematic palette. Uh, however, during the teenage years in Kawanishi, uh, Kojima's passion for filmmaking truly blossomed, and it all started when a friend brought him a Super 8 camera to school. And then Kojima and his friend began crafting movies, charging classmates to witness their creations, uh, and he he pretty much made a uh, side hustle out of that uh, while falling in love further with the cinematics of, uh, of the world. Uh, at one point, he even tricked his parents into funding a trip to a Japanese island just so he can get some more visuals and inspiration and things like that. Like, he, he, was, he was dedicated to this. Filmmaking was his life. Uh, as he navigated adolescence, Kojima's family faced a loss. His father died when he was 13. Um, and you can catch a, a series of different interviews explaining how he felt about that. It, it definitely hit him hard. Uh, there were numerous financial hardships. Um, while he still managed to pursue a degree in economics at a university. Now, I tell you this for uh, a particular reason. Number one, when he was in the university studying for economics, he spent a bit of time writing books as well. And this was in the hopes of getting some sort of accolades enough to garner him a entryway into filmmaking. Um, this did not happen. Not only did it not happen, but he fan friends and family also frowned upon the idea of him pursuing anything movie related. Uh, so his social, his social support and backbone also went out the window as he continued to study in school. 
Uh, and it was only when the Famicom came out that he decided to head in that direction. Uh, working in gaming wasn't exactly frowned upon. However, uh, he still, when asked what he was doing, he mentioned he was simply working for a firm. Uh, but the first thing he did was join the video game industry before all else, even though he still carried the dreams with him of someday becoming a filmmaker. His first step into the gaming industry was with Konami, actually, if you can believe it, uh, working with the MSX Home Computer Division. Um, it was there, um, he, his first ever assignment was uh, Penguin Adventure. Now, he did have a complaint or two about the MSX. Uh, it had a 16 color palette and it was far too limiting in his opinion, but he kind of rolled with it. And this seemingly was the best start he could have had, how, uh, primarily because uh, despite how archaic it is now, uh, it's known for its uh, diverse levels, role playing features like equipment upgrades, even multiple endings. Uh, and despite its release 30 years ago, it's still, it's still highly regarded, uh, despite all things. Now here's where we get to Metal Gear. See, Metal Gear, uh, was a failing game. The game was, f it was on the MSX and it was falling into the dirt. Uh, a senior, a senior, uh, executive actually asked Hideo to take over as they could not figure out combat. Combat seemingly was just sluggish broken and uh, it couldn't be done on the, the uh, game uh, but they didn't want to give up on the game so they gave they handed it over to Hideo uh, to which Hideo changed the battle scheme to instead of being more about action being more about stealth the goal was to escape and less about shooting everyone with uh, glow in the dark bullets that get fired from every other part of the screen and power-ups and what have you uh, and so he actually came through for Konami in that respect and revitalized the failing idea. Subsequently, he was allowed a little more leeway after that, where he was able to create Metal Gear 2, Snake's Revenge, uh, and also work on two passion projects of uh, his, uh, one being uh, Snatcher and the other being Police Knots. Now I can skip the uh, the the discography and history of uh, Kojima. I just wanted to kind of run through the uh, through the beginning with you because we're gonna do a little bit of a uh, uh, step into the future now. And here's what we're looking at. And here's what we're seeing. We're now at a point where Konami has severed all ties with Kojima, and this was, of course, right after Metal Gear Solid: Phantom Pain, and right before they could conclude their production of Silent Hills a game I was personally excited for because it was a new introduction to Silent Hill and we hadn't seen one in some time and Hideo was essentially the only director I trusted in Konami so having him take over and Norman Reedus being in the game all of it sounded nice all of it sounded real nice the only problem was maybe it wasn't Metal Gear Solid 4 was a sign of things to come the, the storyline itself had officially soaked itself up and all that was left was plot line and story. Uh, I remember getting this game the day it came out and I remember playing it religiously until I beat it and realizing just how short it was. However, when you time the actual cinematics, you're looking at roughly about six hours of cinematics alone just watching storyline, storyline and storyline. Um, no matter what, it looked good to be sure, but there was very little gameplay. Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3 had the gameplay there, but they also had a lengthy storyline. As a kid, I'm wondering to myself what the Cold War was and things like that. But yeah, a game as notable as Metal Gear or anything with Hideo attached to it now, you can't, you can't trust the reviews worth a damn. Uh, so going to the Metacritic, you're not going to find anything uh, intelligible uh, other than universal claim, universal claim. But I'll be the first one to tell you I love Hideo more than anything when it comes to game creation. But man, oh man, was Metal Gear Solid Guns of the Patriots probably the slowest slog through um, to get to an ending that's well, any sort of ending for that matter. But I digress. Metal Gear Phantom Pain 
you could tell there was a decline, and we got the news of the decline the moment they decided they were going to wipe Hideo's name from the game before production, or before uh, before uh, having anything manufactured. Uh, so we had heard the falling out during the creation of this game. Everyone was annoyed, saddened, half the people didn't want to play, and those that did found that we only had half of a game when all was said and done. It wasn't even completed. But what was on there was already a lot. In hindsight, when you think about it, that was already a lot, but Hideo had so much more plans for this game. It was apparent. Uh, what's also to note is that the budget was way overblown. Uh, Hideo had obviously blown far past the budget for Metal Gear Phantom Pain uh, and wanted to keep going. Uh, he was convinced this was going to be a shoe in His name, his notoriety, and his fame would be the only reason that this game would do so well at this point because he would, they would seriously have to make some serious sales to push some logical reasoning behind spending so much money on the budget. Now, there are rumors and accounts of people uh, coming up with the idea that, uh, that Kojima essentially just used the rest of the budget to... M uh, focus on production for Silent Hills. Now, that would be a well-founded uh, idea, uh, considering that more than likely what ends up happening is you have Kojima getting all of his friends involved, and his friends are now Hollywood-based, and I do mean Hollywood-based. He knows Guillermo del Toro, uh, Jordan Peele, all these people. He knows these notable names, uh, they're going to cost money to work with. Just because you have a friend in the industry doesn't mean they're going to work for free. That's just not how it works. So whether this is true or not, maybe. But here's what I do know. Even if it's not true, it was going to cost Konami an arm and a leg to get Silent Hills going and finished. Now, I would have loved to have seen it regardless, and I would have demanded they spent every godforsaken penny on it but that's not how the business works that's not how the industry works and so when you get a situation where you have metal gear being shown and displayed here things look good for a time and then all of a sudden you get half a game you get a, a very abrupt ending you get deleted content cutting room floor stuff and most importantly the most notable name that you you've grown up with leaving the game it's some cause for concern now, this is a funny example of taking your ball and going home. Kojima decides to make his own studio. He goes independent. He's not tied to anybody. He answers to no one. He's a master of his own domain. Awesome. More power to him. Most people were all for the idea. It's unfortunate he couldn't take Metal Gear with him. You know, that's how life is and everything like that. But this also gives Hideo time to stretch his wings and come up with creative ideas. And that he did with no one to stop him, with no one to kind of bring him in, tether him in, uh, with the first sign of whatever is to come was Death Stranding. Now, as you may know, Death Stranding was met with 50-50 reviews. Half the people loved it for its innovation and the fact that it is new, different, there's a style to it that can't be replicated, so on and so forth. The other half said, this is the most boring shit I've ever seen in my life. We spent all our days walking, trying to find out what's going on with the plot line, spent more time listening to people talk or walking, one or the other, and it was awful. And it was 50-50. And you got to see what happens when left to his own devices, Hideo gets to make something. Now, everyone thought this was going to be a slam dunk. Even I, I, from, I, I can completely admit that I believe this was going to be the shoe-in game of the century. Uh, once you played it, it was going to blow your mind, change your life. You were going to have kids and reflect on yourself for a couple years. I, I swore that was going to happen, and I was met with the worst kind of realization that maybe Hideo kind of shouldn't be so artsy and risky with his games, especially considering they take two, three, five, seven years to make, and you're hoping for goodness, and all you're met with is a past of uncertainty, and then a future of artistic liberties, I want to say. So then we go to our next project, because at this point, people have, uh, people have loved Death Stranding so much uh, across the board that for some reason now A24 has now decided to pick up a, the rights to make a movie for it, which makes sense. Death Stranding would have made a much better movie than it would a game. The game itself, I'm still trying to beat. To this day, I have not beaten it. It is difficult. But now we have 
OD coming out. And OD, once again taking a page from his Death Stranding days, he's teamed up with his friends in Hollywood. Again. Uh, this time he's got notable stars, and he's even got Jordan Peele working with him to make a new kind of horror element. And they've claimed they're going to change the way horror is done, the, the horror experience, all that stuff. You know, the same same thing everyone says anytime they make something new. They're like, we're going to change the game forever, you know, in that very 90s monotone way. Um, and in the trailer that we got was simply just faces. That was it. Faces. We have nothing to go off of. Uh, you thought Death Stranding's advertisement was confusing and, and, and weird. Yeah, but at least people wanted to know what the hell it was. This one, we just saw human faces talking, and we saw Kojima get to walk out of a Silent Hill PT door, which is hilarious. Uh, at, the, at the actual uh, conference, he steps out of the door that's fashioned to look like the door from the game PT. I guess to kind of make a jab at Konami. Um... I thought it was funny at first, and now thinking about it, I'm just wondering myself, I'm like, who, who, who's that for exactly? And also I got wind that if you uh, zoom in on certain mouths on the characters you just saw in the trailer there, uh, it reveals a, uh, some sort of Japanese variant of the term Silent Hill. I guess he's making jabs at Konami while he's making all these moves, and I get it. And I get it. He's making moves. What he needs to be doing is making moves towards Hollywood. The games aren't aren't tailored for his mind. He is a genius mind, hands down, and I will admit that with the next fan. However, he's not meant for games at all. He spent his life in the world of Hollywood, and we've seen that, but everything we've seen otherwise, such as the mediocre sales for Death Stranding up until they released it on PC and... Uh, every uh, up until they released it on PC, it was only out for PlayStation. He signed an exclusive deal to have Death Stranding out only for one year on PlayStation, and he got what he wanted, and barely anyone could play. So the advertising meant jack. And then once it came out for PC, he got some of the sales and recouped enough that he could make actual profit on his next projects, and that was what he actually said. He said we made enough that we we could recoup what we spent. So it sounds like he broke even. Now, he and his production company will not release numbers and sales at all, which most companies do. Even greedy-ass Konami does. They'll release their numbers and sales and say, this did good, this did bad, because they're very transparent. Hideo is not transparent. He's just doing a bunch of things. He's the video game version of Elon Musk. He's doing things. He's, he's smart. He's doing things. But to what benefit it serves and whether or not it'll be a good idea... We'll all find out together. And I think I think that's the best way I can refer to him. I don't think games are for him simply because I don't want to wait two to three years building hype on a director or a game creator who might make something good. That means nothing to me. I can't do anything with that. I have one child and I have one on the way. Hey, go me. Uh, but I have one on the way. And the last thing I want is to wait two years for a game about a janitor who collects mop buckets and then one day he finds out he's a sleeper assassin and then you want to know what you know more about the information you're like up oh, can't hideo doesn't release any information but hey this has uh you know this has clint eastwood in it because uh he knows some guys in hollywood it just it, it baffles me it baffles me how close hideo gets to hollywood without actually stepping foot in hollywood it's almost as if he's scared However, he's now in such a gray area that he can't afford to spend or overspend because now it's his own money. He can't use his own money to overspend. Because if he does that, he'll capsize and then all of his reputation and credibility go down the drain. Every game, every game he's made since Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation has always been applauded visually and narratively. But when it comes to gameplay, as the years have gone by, he simply, much like the very first Metal Gear, he found a way to circumvent the gameplay and add more narrative. And you can see through the reviews, uh, you can see through a few of the reviews actually, that's all people have to say now. Now we're at a point where people play things like Death Stranding and they say the game looks beautiful but you're just walking around. You've literally stripped the game from any form of action just so you can tell a story. 
you may as well make a movie. You may as well write a book. He's channeling all the things he didn't get to do early on because he didn't have the support and he didn't have the, the, the backup. And now he does. And now that he does, he's using that to go back and chase his dreams. And I applaud that. I am all for chasing your dreams. But now we have people believing in this man to create some gaming masterpieces and it simply won't happen because he's not a gaming masterpiece kind of guy. He is a director. He is a producer. He is a Hollywood man. He's meant for the movies now. I'm done seeing Hideo Kojima games. Like, I, I would be fine if he said he retired today from making any more games. That doesn't mean I won't try them. Don't be silly. It just means that he's not he's, he's just not cut out for this anymore i'm not saying it needs to be an action shooter railgun charger masterpiece i'm saying it needs to have the game as well as the story people love the game and they love the story they love both some more than others some lean on one side over the other but hideo has taken the train all the way into narrativesville and not given a shit about the game itself so much so that he just showed us a trailer of people's faces and was like here you go it's a trailer for my new game is hype built yet are you hyped what does any of that mean other than you know some movie stars and you know directors what in the world does that mean i'll tell you what it means it means absolutely nothing and i don't think i'm gonna be fooled by him pushing out this kind of content anymore until i see something actually i don't know groundbreaking enough to force me to believe that he knows what he's doing in the gaming realm you have a production company you should just shun, uh, shovel all your money in the movies and call it a night and that's why i think hideo kojima needs to stop making games i went through his entire history and learned only one thing he was built and meant for movies from the start since a child and it only shows every time i see something new with him in it 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 shows more and more and I don't know about you guys, but after Silent Hill Ascension, I'm done playing things that are quote-unquote games and only turned out to be storybooks. I don't know. Anyway, if you like what you see, make sure you hit that subscribe. Make sure you hit that like button. Uh, be, uh, be also aware that uh, I do have a Patreon, and if you check down in the comments down below, you'll see the Patreon link. For $3 a month, you can get special access to me and my content, some uh, cut content and things you can't see elsewhere you'll find there. That was a commercial. That's awkward, isn't it? You guys just sound it found out that uh, rather than downloading and editing, I can just watch a video and then live stream it and then talk over it. You want to know something else funny while you're here? That's my camera. I'm right here. The only reason you didn't see my camera in much of the uh, filming today is because for some reason it's delayed like an old Chinese martial arts movie. I don't know why. Huh. There, that that uh that one's for free. That behind the scenes look is definitely for free. The rest will cost you though. Much love to you guys. Special shout out to my patrons, and I'll see you guys fucking you know whenever. <laughs>